Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Shirley Smart. This is my friend and colleague, James Arvin. Right. Um, we're coming to you live from sunny Catford, and <laughs> we've got a, a presentation for you today about free improvisation. Um, James and I, James plays the saxophone and the flute, sometimes the bass clarinet as well. Um, and we're both very interested in, in the concept and the practice of free improvisation. So our presentation is all about that today. We'll be talking a bit about various things in it and playing some as well. Um, there might be some very odd noises going on, but stick with it. There are some <laughs> nice ones as well. It's the whole idea of free improvisation. Um, and yeah, we'll be around to answer also any questions that you have after the presentation. So don't yeah. be shy to ask anything you're interested in, you'd like to know, we'll just sort of talk about at the end. I hope you enjoy it.
Yeah. And he's, he's, he's an absolutely amazing guy. He, yeah, he did a, some he did some arrangements back, uh, you know, back in the fifties, I think, or when Duke Ellington was on one of his far eastern tours, and he went to Ethiopia, and Duke Ellington actually played one of his arrangements, and um, and there's a, an incredible album cover of him of Malatu conducting the band, and Duke sitting there on the piano. Oh, it's not it's absolutely one. amazing. So he, he played he played with some of the greats, and he sort of he, he went to Berkeley, and then he sort of went to New York and studied with them incredible people. So he's he's one of these one of the last few sort of real living great jazz musicians that grew up in the time of the fifties and sixties and in the great era of, of, of jazz, you know, well, I know yeah, perhaps one of the first later. but yeah. perhaps also one of the first people to start bringing what we think of as ethnic music or world music and traditional music mm -hmm. into the jazz context, not non American jazz. Yeah. I mean Malatu doesn't use the word world music. He doesn't yeah. I mean it doesn't really mean anything. It's, it's a term that we we Westerners use, use, I suppose, to mean anything that isn't Western music as yeah. we know it. So his, but if you were to listen to Ethiopian music, it's, it's actually very tonal. It's, it's based on loads of of modes that you know you can describe using Western Western language, uh, but also some of the rhythms and some of the other conventions are slightly slightly different. It's, it's a very beautiful yeah. music. So I just fell into that through absolutely sheer luck. Wrong, they, the guy <laughs> rang up the wrong person. No way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I said, you know, that's fine, I can still have free. And it was really good because I, I got on well with the band and Nalati was touring um, and we were his kind of backing band and he got to know us. And, and you know, it's one of those really serendipitous moments where you just you just think back and you think, wow, I'm so lucky that I was in that, that person at that time. And my whole life changed because of that. Mm -hmm. And through, through this, through playing with Malatu, I met Shirley sure, because Malatu is really interested in the sonorities of, 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 of all different types of instruments in the band. So when we, it's not just a jazz band. He would like a jazz band with a cello. He would like it with uh, you know loads of percussion, or, or maybe something like a, a, a something what's called an Ethiopian kraal, which is like an Ethiopian lute mm. sort of lyre. It's, like it's not lute, it's a lyre, Ethiopian harp, really. Um, so we met, we met doing that really. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I started playing with that band. Sometimes, because my my own background, obviously, I'm, I'm a classically trained cellist, like like James, starting out with that, um, and I then ended up by a similar lot of accidents and fortuitous, serendipitous yeah. moments, going to live in Jerusalem for ten years. And while I was there, I learned a lot of North African, Arabic, and Turkish music, particularly, and also jazz. So for me, they were always quite mixed up. Anyway, yeah. Um, yeah. and when Malatu needed somebody to to do some gigs for his band, I was sort mm. of the person who got the call for that one. Yeah. Um, but we were talking, do you remember, we were chatting in the green room, both of us, on one of the gigs, yeah. after a few bottles of food, glasses, bottles, oh, something, oh, something oh, of wine. Uh, but we were, just, we were just chatting about free improvisation, and, and you were saying you, you were quite interested in doing something a bit different, yeah. something kind of new, and I yeah. just started running a free improvisation yeah, evening absolutely. at the green room yeah. to yeah. Camden. Yeah. Um, and we said, well, why don't we get together and have a play? Because yeah. um, I've never done it before. Yeah. I mean, I've always been interested in creativity, um, and I had had a few um, opportunities to play completely free, but not not in a sort of this is a free situation, you know. It's, um, mm. So for me, and it, it was a, it was it was great to do that, and, and I found it really um, exciting, and, and also quite sort of actually. I remember thinking at the very beginning it was, it was quite nerve wracking because there is literally nothing. There's no dots. There's no music. There's yeah. no plan. That's something to get your head around, especially when you've got an audience of, you know, 50, 60, 100 people all there, and you have to, you have to perform for, what is it, like two 45 minute sets, that's quite a, a lot. Mm. So you think, well, what are you gonna do? How are you gonna In fact, that was the first thing, do you remember when yeah. I arranged the gig? Because I could hear when we were doing the Malatu gig, and I could hear you like being right on the edge of playing really free stuff, and I thought, if we just took the band away and let James carry on playing, <laughs> it would just sound amazing on its own. Um, then we got together and I remember coming around to your house and you yeah. sort of made a cup of tea and then went, right, so now what do I do? <laughs> right, <laughs> where, where, where's the music? <laughs> What's this well, thing? Yeah, we just started playing. I, I seem to remember our first yeah. our first track got entitled The Snaffling Moles. Yes, exactly. Um, but yeah, basically that's that's how we started yeah. playing freely like this, was just literally to sit down and, and, and start playing. It's just, we, I mean, it's a silly title, but it, it, it was a descriptor for, mm. like, it's sort of the techniques you can use. I mean, it, anything with free music, you, you know, 
hands, you, are, you can think of an instrument not just as a saxophone or a flute or a cello, but it's, it's a, it is actually a vehicle for sound, you know, that is a sound, you know, and if you can put yourself into the space where that is an acceptable sound, you know, that's, that's where improvised music is. Maybe, that would be a nice thing to lead us into the next part yeah. of our um, presentation yeah. today, because we were actually thinking it might be nice to talk about some of the techniques that we move in and out of when mm. we're playing through a piece. Yeah. Um, and some of the things that really give you some particular things to maybe go and try out for yourselves at home or with a friend. Yeah, um, one, one of them was, we were going to do this in a different order, but since we're here, first. Do try this at home. The home home will not your instrument might fall apart, but your house will. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> try not to break your instrument. Yeah. Well, though, if you speak to John Edwards, he might have different opinions. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, we were going to do this in different order. But let's start with the extended yeah, absolutely. Technique. So yeah, we yeah. start just by let's do a short one, just starting with some weird noises. Some really weird noises. Yeah.
also, very important improvisation lesson there, work it into the music. <laughs> <laughs> go with it. <laughs> yeah, go with it. Um, but that is something we wanted to talk about a yeah. little bit, wasn't it? With yeah. any form of improvisation, whether it's, it's genre-based or free improvisation, mm -hmm. is, and especially when you're getting used to improvising, I don't know how many people have done much improvising out there, um, but when you're getting used to it, it's actually just freeing yourself up and allowing whatever comes out to be what you just, that's yeah. what you just done. It's, it's acceptance. Yeah. So the phone rang, okay, which wasn't supposed to happen, by the way. <laughs> you know, that, that it doesn't like, yeah, necessarily be a phone, it could be anything, like you're performing and the spring breaks or a stream breaks or, but the, but the, but the real skill is just accept that and go with it and, and, and make the best of what you've got. Make something out of it. And that's why you always hear those stories of incredible musicians or sportsmen or people who, you know, you don't even realise that they're functioning on, on, on like not all cylinders, you know, like incredible, like, you know, the bass players where a string will go and you, you just, you know, you wouldn't notice and they just, they refigure everything. And so, there yeah. There are some contexts where that probably isn't possible. Yes, but there are. Certainly yes, in yes, yes, context, absolutely, it's certainly yeah, yeah. one of those things mm -hmm. just to, to get used to working with absolutely, and yeah. adapting to whatever is happening or something that comes out that's unexpected, mm -hmm. thinking, how so, can I make that work? So, what sort of. Um, Techniques we're using there. Are there any sort of fundamentals that you use as a cellist? Um, I've always wanted to ask this question. They were so really great. I'm not quite sure to be honest. I think. I mean, obviously, one of the first ones that's quite nice is to use the cello as a percussion instrument. Um, just, there's a nice little sweet spot usually on the top bit of the instrument and down there. So you yeah, can, resonance. That's yeah. You can very easily yeah, get a fish. I suppose you do it quite gentle with it, don't you? You do. You're not using drumsticks. No, 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 I wouldn't do that. Although there was a period where I had, um, I did it so much on gigs that the, all the varnish work wore off here. Oh, right, right. Like, right. When the guy re varnished it, I took it back, I took this cello back yeah. to Colin Irving, who made it, mm -hmm. and he put it on the desk and he said, My goodness, that seems smashing, does <laughs> it? Completely took it to bits. I think it was the first cello he ever made. Yeah. And this yeah. bit, I said. It's still a bit worn here, isn't it? It is, yeah, yeah because I yeah. actually said to him, I'm, I'm going to do it again, um, yeah. so what yeah. could we do? And he actually put a top coat of a really hard varnish on here yeah. Yeah. and down here where I do the same thing. So I can now do that and it won't damage the, the wood or the varnish. Mm -hmm. um, but if this one, I'm just even finding maybe better with something, getting on the screen. All those harmonics, you know those? Yeah. Yeah, it's just a twist. Nice. Where you hit it, it's just going to... using your cello as a, as a way of making sounds that you can using that. Absolutely, yeah, just, it's just finding a nice little pattern or and something. And does the pitch like change as you get, you get higher or lower, or is there no, a sweet no, spot? No, same. Is there any, what about if you hit it more towards the bass end of the You'll get more bass. You get more bass. Yeah, and if you're there, you get more bass. Yeah, you can do it actually like. You get both. Yeah. So you, um, can, you could write, you could get a little tune out of that. These are quite sweet. Well, I like this. Bit of nice. Yeah. <laughs> like that little thumb piano. Yeah. Um, but then there's all our, our uh, orchestral effects that we can use, like playing on the bridge. It's a really nice one. As opposed to playing on the so Usually our, our contact point is somewhere yeah. in between. What about below the bridge? Below the bridge is horrendous, but it's quite cool sometimes. This one I have on my cello. Way more noise. Yeah. Yeah, that is a that is. I like that one. <laughs> that's that's. See, it's amazing the sounds you can get. Out. Harmonics, like double harmonics, are quite nice. Maybe two at the same time. That's just literally touching the string, just just very gently. Yeah, but false harmonics are usually made by putting your thumb down on the string or or a finger and then placing your other finger just on the string. Yeah. Gives you a note like an octave above yeah. there. Yeah. But you can do two. So you're getting an octave there, aren't you? Oh, that's not an octave. No, that's a fifth. A fifth. But you can play two of them at the same yeah. time. Wow. There's all these ones up here. Do you sand those? The swan effect. There's a seagull. <laughs> 
there's lots of stuff. Oh, my favourite one, the mousetrap. <laughs> that's very silly as well. Oh, good. But, yeah, it's just finding sounds and then yeah. where to use them in context and stuff. But how did you get into that? How did you? I mean, I suppose you start by playing with scales and then you think, well, how am I going to play a scale? Or what do do? What happens if I do this? Or I think it's more what that? happens if I do that, um, actually. Yeah. Which is, well, this one is quite nice. Right? The bow.
feel mostly like you know it's because there's no script because there's no you're improvising you're, you're making it up as you go along and so a lot of it depends on, on on you have to understand I feel like personally we have to we have to, there's a lot of give and take in, in our playing and there's a lot of going along with someone's idea as well so so you know it's, it's I suppose in terms of nuts and bolts we're talking about like so you know you you've got your technique that's your kind of bedrock that you you, you know you've got these different things you can choose to do or not to do but that's what, very much dependent on the kind of emotional mood that you're in at the time mm. um, and even though you don't think I'm going to play a sad tune now or I'm going to play a crazy tune now or these things might just come in and, and it's all dependent on what Shirley might do and whether we're going to go with each other or go against each other so so, so for example I'm constantly listening to what you're doing I'm listening out for little motives or little themes and I'm thinking ah oh, that's really I'll pick up oh, that's, that was a nice little thing there I might, I might pick that one up later and I might try and weave so, that in yeah. to what you've done there or, but then you've all so you've got sort of textures that we can, we can converse on you've also got harmony that we can converse on so I'm, I'm thinking well are we in a are we in a key? I mean, this is all subconscious, obviously. Like, are we in a key? Or are we moving through some keys? Or are we in a sort of atonal key? Um, and also rhythmic as well. So uh, if, if, you've, if you've got some, if you've got some a really strong rhythmic motive that comes out, that, that, that completely adds a lot of energy into the play as well. It changes how, how, how we play. So we're just playing using like a drone or some kind of sort of, you know, mysterious type mood we're creating and then suddenly you come in with some uh, strong rhythmic idea I have a point now uh, I think okay I have to react to this in some way what do I do do I stay the same which can be okay yeah and then that means you might go off and do a use that for yourself and I could, it could be something like a melody and accompaniment type of situation or if you do something very strong I could react to that and stop what I'm doing and then either react and do something completely different but 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 new or something, or something similar, and then, and then from there, and it sort of goes in these sort of waves of, of, of but the most important thing is, is, is the trust thing, we have to, I have to, you know, it's, it's a real sort of give and take, you know, one minute we go with each other, and you can't always choose how it's going to come out, and sometimes yeah. we have really lovely gigs where things work, and you, but you have to trust that sometimes you might not, you, something will come out on the instrument that you didn't really intend it to do, like, and you have to be very accepting of that and actually go with it. So, for example, with the, when the phone went off, you know, you have to accept that that's happened and just go with it and try and make, try and take the music in the direction that that's in that, mm. in that way. And we've had a few of those. We've had, yeah. Yeah. Exactly, where it's yeah. just we, we both felt afterwards that the, there, was one, there was one particular one, I remember the, uh, when we played in Birmingham a few weeks ago, yeah. that it took quite a while to settle, but when it did, we found some really beautiful things in it. And I think that part of... Yeah, learning to let the music unfold and kind of yeah. lead you. Let it breathe. It's such an important part of it. Yeah, really Not just dynamically. Play, but, but taking time to yeah. let ideas develop. Yeah. And not, I think that's something yeah. that a lot of people feel when they yeah. start. Like, oh, God, I've got to do something. And it's, not, it's actually mm. really just allowing the idea time to... Yeah. Absolutely. And long, if you actually watch yourself or if you have ever recorded yourself playing, you, you realise that your brain is going a million miles an hour, so you're rushing through stuff. So mm. you, the, the most important thing is to just relax and let a, let an idea just sit for a long time, because people yeah. will, pe people take time to to imbibe that idea, and because you're you're already on the next idea, and also you've got the element of nerves as well. Like, so it's learning to control control self consciousness as well. Yeah, and, and, and people feel that especially absolutely you know, free improvisation. Yeah. Because there is, we haven't pre-decided. Obviously, today we've slightly pre-decided a few things, things we're that we're going to demonstrate yeah. an idea. Yeah. But if we're on a gig, we really don't mm -hmm. sign anything. You feel naked, like really. Yeah. You, feel, you feel, but you have to. Uh, I don't know. I think I think it's a lot of kind of positive thinking, a lot of lot of just relaxation, deep breathing, just just trying to control your breathing. And then what I've always, what I always do is I just pretend that people are not there. I pretend we're just we're just having a bit of a play, and we're just gonna. Let's just let it let the music flow rather than trying to make make yeah, it. If, if you yeah, just and I know there's a this is sort of hard to these are weird sort of esoteric terms, aren't they? Really, but what breathing? Well, like so, let the music yeah. flow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like you can't really choose what's going to happen, and if you try and go, yes, we're going to play in this way, and 
and this and that. It, it never works out like that, does it? So no, it absolutely doesn't. Kind of quite an accepting thing. I yeah, suppose. and also this, I, I find for me, there's always this kind of one ear is in what you're doing right now, mm. and one ear is slightly outside and trying to see a whole shape across yeah. the thing. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, you're trying well, to that's listen. Quite interesting yeah, as well. you're, you're, you're thinking of the shape, you're thinking of What's what the other person is doing and, and what you're you're doing Where as well. Where it might go, but then it, it yeah. invariably never does. And I was always I was always concerned like when do we stop? Oh, yeah, that's an interesting one, isn't it? I still don't really know the answer. But I know when it's time. Yeah. That's it's weird, a very isn't it? interesting one with stopping with free improvisation. When do you stop? And how do you know? Because you watch some some people who are masters that they just they'll start and then they'll all get together. As if it was like, yes, we decided to talk, stop it. 15, no, <laughs> 30 seconds. But I, I don't really know the answer to that. I'm, uh, I'm sort of... I think you reach a point in the music, you, you, can, you can feel it because you, you feel like the shape of the music... It tends to have its own energy, doesn't it? The energy yeah. sort of tends to sort of... You start to feel that it's time to... You've, you've got as far as you can with that, that piece mm. of time. Yeah, that thing of letting it be a piece and also feeling like if there were things that you perhaps wanted to do that didn't come out, that's fine because that piece is what it is at that moment mm. and you can always bring them out in a different mm. yeah. piece. Patience. Yeah. Try not to be too, oh, I'm not talking for me, obviously I'm talking about me, but try not to be too contrived or dogmatic about something. You know, don't, oh, I didn't play my extended, you know, <laughs> didn't play my extended circular breathing, you know. Thing. Thing. <laughs> I want to play that now. <laughs> yeah, that's not. That's not how it works. <laughs> yeah, but I think so. I, I think it's a nice thing. It's a really lovely way to warm up when you're practicing. I think actually, just to play completely freely for yeah. say five minutes and mm. let whatever comes out come out. And if you yeah. have the opportunity to do that with someone else, it's even nicer. Yeah. Um, if you have small kids, you might want to do that. Give them a saucepan, and it's a great way to let them get into it. Shut the door. <laughs> yeah, maybe make sure the neighbors are out first. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, shall we try so, one more thing that we do? might like to try themselves at home? Which is again, again. The bait of anything? Yeah. Let's yes. try taking, again, this is something you might like to try out for yourself just to have something to, to hang on to at the beginning of a, a very free improvisation is to pick a, a motive or an idea that is familiar to you already. Um, we've chosen one that I think will be familiar to everyone, um, but we're literally going to take just that motive and then see where it goes. Yeah. Are we going to start in key or are we start in key? Let's see. Oh, 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 oh. 
Do you think I should apologise to Beethoven now? I think he's probably told us. <laughs> 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 oh well. Um, yeah, apologies yeah. to anyone who was offended. Any of those Beethoven aficionados out there? Yes, we do apologise, but it's too late now. <laughs> <laughs> the damage is done. But the idea of that, obviously, hopefully, is to take a, a little idea just as something to hook on to through yeah. the improvisation. Yeah. Um, and hopefully that's, you can hear it coming in and out of that. And that, I do think that's quite a useful thing to have as a, mm. a technique. And it's definitely a very it's nice It's a way in, isn't it? It's a way in for someone who really doesn't, have, you know, doesn't know about free improvisation. Well, hasn't done it well, hasn't done it that's, that's the best yeah. way we learn is by yeah. doing it. Actually. Just to weigh in and do it and, and pick an idea or rhythm or, or you know. Yeah, it's yeah. a nice thing about it. I was going to pick up one other thing that you were doing loads in that one, which was using like little patterns and things as well out, yeah. of, out of the scale that we had. Oh, that's yes. a very, very useful little technique as yeah. well. So perhaps we could talk a little bit about that. Perhaps just using, even just using one mode. Yeah. Um, cool. Creating different colours using modes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, it's all about. I suppose you have to learn your scales, don't you? Really, so you've got to, you know, you've got to be able to play in scales. What scale. do you mean by that? Do you reckon? All scales, all keys. Yeah, but I think there's something also about learning the colour of a scale ah, yes. as well. It's not just like here it is under the fingers. Yeah, yeah. And not yeah. just a thing that we go up and down absolutely, with, but yeah. a thing that we create movements Moves, and melodies yeah. and shapes with as well. And thinking the scale is a kind of like a shot, I believe would be the technical term, but like a whole thing in it, a whole concept rather than just a set a set of notes, you know what I mean? Mm. There's a sound part to it. Definitely, yeah. definitely. What's like, the word for the way you see colours in music? It's um, synthesis. That's it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, but like something maybe like taking a really dark scale, like something like oh, a Phrygian yeah. that we were talking about, mm. which is this mm. this scale, and something you may have come across it on before. It's kind of like a minor scale, but with a flattened second as well. So it sounds like this.
because it's got it's got well it's a difficult question because if you compare it to a major scale if you compare that to C sharp well it's going to be big isn't it for you mm. right if you compare that to to the major scale you've basically changed every note you possibly Flanking can everything without changing the fundamental nature of that note mm. it stops becoming uh, B locrian if you change any more notes it's got the most yeah, that's true. Yeah. everything's being changed it's really that, for me it's been that flat five so uh, it's one of the ones with the flat five yeah but yeah. natural four that's the only natural note isn't it I'm still, you know, an apprentice. 
apprentice in the, in the arts of, of, of mm. free improvisation. Well, maybe that's a, another thing, to, is that it is always a learning journey as well, yeah. isn't it? And expanding, expanding the range of what you're capable of hearing sometimes yeah. as well, and exploring that, and also finding out like sometimes if one, if I think an important thing of it is accepting that sometimes, you, every now and then you come up with one thing, do you know what, I really didn't, wasn't that keen on that one? Mm. But accepting that, as that's the nature of, of the beast, isn't it? That risk factor of it, it might not work. Mm -hmm. But what's the worst that can happen? Yeah. The building isn't going to collapse. No, and you just, you know that... No lockdowns will be caused by free improvisation. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, it's all right. But what was it I didn't, you know, what was it that I didn't like, perhaps, that like, sometimes you're reflecting on it and thinking what you did and didn't like and what, what you And you've got to separate out the output from your mental state at the time as well. Mm, that's that's, that's the thing, because, well. you know, a lot of time when you hear yourself back, you, you have to try and sort of break free from that that is you that's playing. Mm, definitely. You know, especially, like, that's, the, that's a common thing, isn't it? You know, oh, that was a terrible take. Oh, so what... Was it really, or was it just you felt really bad because you didn't quite get this extra, this bit here? You know, to someone else that might be an amazing thing because they're not so, you know, set on that particular note that didn't come out quite right, and that can just change your whole mood, mm. and that can affect how you see a, a finished piece that you might be looking back on. So it's always good to give it a bit of time and try and be really objective about it, and not to try and don't think about think of the whole rather than. Yeah, it's very much a learning process in that way that is wider than the actual music you play, I think, yeah. as well, isn't it? That's why I've, I've found yeah. a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. Shall we finish up? Shall we finish up? Uh, is it a tune? Do we call it a tune? Yeah. Peace. Okay. Peace, yes. <laughs> are we, what are we going to do? Gonna, what's, this, what's the menu say? Just... I think we'll finish, it, uh, finish up by playing one more piece, tune, work, creation, whatever yeah. you would like to call it. Yeah. Um, yeah, we hope you've enjoyed our little presentation. Yeah, thank you very much. Chat. Thank you, for thank you so very much for being here, Mr. James Arpin on the tennis saxophone. Thank you. you Show us on the cello. Thank you. I feel very under instrumented normally because normally you come with clarinets and bass clarinets. All matter. Well. I need them. I need them. I need them. So I need them. We can do more of that than all of them. We do have a biased audience here, but exactly, you yeah. are right. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I uh, shall so start by demonstrating that by giving you a drone and a melody at the same time. Oh my God. <laughs>
Hi, um, we are now live. So I, I hope you enjoyed our presentation and um, the music that we made. Um, I think our first question was to do with whether how much of the music we decide or how much of it is pre-decided before we play. Yeah. Um, basically none. Um, that is exactly mm, that's the That's a short answer though, isn't it? Yeah. Really. It's a very, very funny balance with free improvisation and, and I think one that's very difficult to answer, but yeah, effectively, you just sit and play. Uh, yeah, I mean, that sounds... You do sit and play, but you're, you're drawing in on influences that mm. you of musical experiences you've had that may go back many, many years. You know, you're sort of... You're using all of that all of that acquired knowledge that may not be completely present in your in your actual consciousness but when you're in a certain moment things do come come through that that you might not have thought about or a melody may come through that that that, that may have been in in your subconscious for many years and it's, it's an acquired an acquired knowledge and also a, a joint language that we share um, and explore and ex as well and and, and challenge yeah. uh, and and either either challenge that language or or um, or, or go with with that language I yeah that, yeah and I think it's also very much about the process of actually making the music in the moment so a lot of it for me is is responding to the dynamic of a piece of music as you're creating it so when you when you want to change a texture if yeah. you want to change a sound yeah. um, or change an idea so it's very much having a sense of how it's unfolding in real time. Um, and that's something that, no, we definitely don't plan, and, and none of the thematic material, we don't have a tonal plan, for example. No, no. Um, and some of the exercises we were just doing when we were demonstrating the modes, yeah. we kind of had one there, because that's part of, yeah. sort of the, yeah. that's part of the, the practice, I suppose, that goes on ahead, is just yeah. knowing your musical materials and mm. listening for, for the effect of them and just getting used to the sound world of them yeah. so that you can then use that in a free context. It's a, it's a high risk game really because you, you never know whether they're going to work really um, and sometimes you know what works for one person doesn't always work and vice versa and you sort of come off feeling you know it's, it's to do with the ego as well like if you feel like you've had a great oh that was a great one does, does that is that referring to your playing or is that referring to the, the link or was that referring to the overall, the the, the whole really? So, um, the in answer to the question is no. So that, that that's what makes it exciting as well. So when 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 a a concert or performance goes really well, it's 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 just it's just such a great feeling because you you, you know, it could have gone in many many different ways. And it's very much to do with your state of mind and your kind of mood. I think actually sometimes. Yeah. And so I often feel that Shirley and I we need to sort of get a lot of the kind of ah. Oh, Bluster out, and then and then maybe sort of after the second piece or maybe the third piece, we, we start to settle in a bit more into what we're what we're doing. So yeah, sometimes mm. yeah, I mean there's there's a huge range of, me. <laughs> of free improvisers as well. There's a, a very big international scene of free improvisation, yeah. Yeah. and actually the UK has quite a um, a long tradition of free yeah. improvisation that grew out of free jazz, but it's very much diverged into. Yeah. Um, improvisation that is not sort of growing out of the jazz tradition as well and that is to me is a very very interesting thing because it's sort of non-idiomatic it doesn't mean so you're not improvising in a style mm. um, and mm. that I think the UK is, does have a very very lively scene of that which I, I find really interesting and you can hear some really great players doing yeah. very interesting some very odd um, things that take a little while to mm. understand what they're doing but all exploring sounds in really different ways yeah um, completely on atonal and beyond yeah you know but the short answer is no it's not pre-prepared <laughs> <laughs> do we have any other questions Pedro? we can't no, actually see the chat that's, at the moment so that's it. that's it okay we have one right. question Brilliant. good all right well we Thanks hope you've enjoyed it um see you again at some future point in time thank you thank you